and welcome to the hustings for the 2020-2021 UL Student Life Student Officer Elections. So um, I'd like to thank all the candidates for being here today and I know that this is a strange, a strange medium to be doing this um, as would usually be uh, in the Jan Monet. So I'm joined here currently with our candidates for our new student officer position which is VP, our Vice President for Communities. Um, so I suppose how hustings is going to take off is everybody is going to have two minutes to host. We have questions from the student population courtesy of our social media and our emails and the hashtag UL votes on Twitter. Um, so everybody has two minutes to host. Um, I will raise my hand at one minute to let you know that there is one minute left and then I will start belting my table in my house. So when I start hitting my table after two minutes, it's basically an indicator for you to stop talking. Okay. Um, so we'll start in alphabetical order and um, I suppose we'll do introductions first, just who you are, and then we'll get on to questions. Okay. So I will start with Aoife. Hi guys. Um, so do you want me to do my two minutes now or just a quick kind of hello thing? Um, you can do an introduction so you can speak about your manifesto points or anything along the lines. Like yeah, perfect. So, um, hi everyone. Uh, my name's Aoife Hand. I'm hoping to be the new and first VP for Communities. So, obviously the VP for Communities role was created as a way to promote equality around campus and equality is something that I'm really, really passionate about and hopefully that will come across properly in my manifesto. Um, so I suppose if I was to be elected uh, representative for UL for VP for Communities, I would ensure that disability accessibility um, and audit takes place across campus. So this would result in a more strategic and diverse plan to ensure that people with both physical and mental disabilities, they're not advantaged uh, when it comes to accessibility around the campus. Um, I'm very lucky through my work in Enactus UL, I've represented the college on an international level and I get such, such joy from that. Um, through helping both people and our planet. So together with my team, I work with refugees and asylum seekers. Um, we work with uh, IPAs and we sell food from Zimbabwe, Africa, all that. And um, I'm really, really proud to say that I'm, I'm part of this and increasing the, the participants and making a big difference in the, the UL community. So as community VP, I plan to carry out the work uh, or carry on the work that student officers have done in the past. And one of the things that's really strong in my manifesto is uh, protesting rather um, against our mark on campus. So for those of you that don't know direct provision, it's a for profit system that houses refugees and asylum seekers. Um, a lot of the facilities or restaurants that we have on campus at the moment and vending machines as well are currently owned by our mark. So one of my main things would be to protest against our mark and remove them from campus. And by doing so, we're allowing for a greater variety of restaurants and ensuring that an ethical clause is brought Sorry, Eva. I'll, um, <laughs> I'll get back to you at a later date about that. But anyway, I'm sure you'll have plenty of time and the questions to come to keep going. Um, so we'll go to Chelsea next. Okay. Can I start? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea Joyce. I'm from Westbrook County Mayo. I study history, economics and sociology. I'm currently in final year and I want to be your first vice president for communities. Well, firstly, I'm running with the team Jack and we've been promoting each other so much and just putting in such hard work to our campaign and our manifestos. And it's this encouragement and support that I want to bring as your vice president for communities. So firstly, um, I think that the qualities that we have can make us really good new officers for ye, for student officers. The beauty about this role is that it's new and it's fresh. It needs new ideas, it needs new suggestions. And if I'm elected, I will be encouraging students to help me fulfill this role. I want to be the voice for our students. I'm a very compassionate and empathetic person. And I hope that this shows through my manifesto and through my points and through my overall personality. I hope that people kind of can relate to me and can come forward and talk to me easily because that's all I want is to represent our students. Some of my manifesto points include providing a safer and secure campus and um, I hope to do this by having consent workshops, a consent video introduced during orientation week and also something else I want to do is work with Jake who's on my team for welfare. We want to have focus groups and kind of make students aware of consent and different things on campus. Another thing is self-defense. I think self-defense is something that 
we should have as a campus, I want to have a massive event that promotes security and safety to our students. We all have been put in situations where we feel vulnerable and I want to stop this. I want students to feel safe on campus. Another thing as well is the student staff in UL. Working from student life, I know working at reception, you're put in certain vulnerable situations and I want students to feel confident on how to handle these situations. Also, um, I want to increase this accessibility on campus, so I want to work with the Disability Services Contact Point in order to improve accessibility. Um, I've contacted them already and they seem very eager to work with me if I get elected. I'll Sorry, Chelsea, <laughs> I got you off. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm on a roll. <laughs> I know, I know. I'll be sure you'll be able to come back to it later. And I will introduce Christor next. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Christor. I'm a fourth year European Studies student and I'm also looking to be your first PP for um, communities. And so we built our campaign about around three central themes. So inclusivity, engagement and uh, sustainability. So we want to make UL a more inclusive campus by um, improving access for, for students with disabilities. That means um, more um, quiet and sensory friendly spaces for students with autism mainly, especially in the library. And secondly, um, a lot better access for wheelchair users because at the moment it's not, the campus is not very accessible for, for wheelchair users at all. Um, and we also want to tackle hate crime on, on campus. Um, so I don't believe that any student should feel unwelcome on campus just because of their identity, be that gender, race, whatever. So we have a plan, a three-step plan for tackling hate crime, and that is number one, an aware awareness raising campaign, number two, providing um, hate crime training to students and staff, and number three, um, I want to set up a dedicated hate crime reporting system. Um, I want to improve student engagement on campus um, by reaching out to different groups who feel a little bit Kind of removed from the whole like university life. Um, I've had a great experience on campus but I think everyone should have that experience so I want to reach out to commuter students who often find it a little bit more difficult to make friends so um, dedicated, I'm dedicated I want to organize dedicated um, events just for them such as coffee mornings they often have to come, come in a lot earlier in the morning and maybe things like social soccer matches, social sports games, things like that. Um, I also want to reach out to our sanctuary students who are in direct provision and organize more events where they can get to know more students on campus. I also think that student engagement should extend to every single part of university life, so we should have a, a, a kind of a say in everything. So there are other models of accommodation in other European countries for students, and our one isn't working at all at the moment, so I want to, to encourage a by students, for students uh, model of accommodation, which would be cost price. And lastly, sustainability. I have experience in this area. I'm really involved, hopefully, in the climate movement, and I was chair, I was president of Envirosoft for three semesters, so I'm currently sorry, uh, Chris Store. I have to cut you off there. I'm sure that we'll you'll be able to get back uh, to that. Um, right. So um, I'm going to say questions from the floor, but it's actually not from the floor. Hot off in Instagram. Um, so we'll start with Chelsea. Um, and this is, question is actually for all candidates. Um, first question is, what will be your two or three key focus areas for the year. So we'll start with Chelsea. Um, my three main focus areas for the year, I think a major one is definitely the safety and security on campus that I was on about. I'm so passionate about this. I want students to feel safe. I know many, many incidents happen on campus where students are vulnerable and I want, I completely want students to feel happy and safe on campus and feel like that they can do anything that they want to do. Um, another thing that I want to focus on as well is the development of sensory rooms in the old student centre. I think that the development of sensory rooms is a great way for students to kind of de-stress and relax, in particular students who are very, very sensitive to the ongoing situations that happen on campus. I mean, we know what it's like being a full-time student. It is very, very stressful and I want to have development of rooms for students with intellectual disabilities, mental health illnesses and autism as well. I think the development of these rooms will really, really help to support our students. And at the end of the day, that's the most important thing to me and my team, Jack. Another, situ another um, major point of mine is to um, the accessibility on campus. Definitely, like I really, really want um, to work with the disabilities rep and work with the disability services contact point in order to improve accessibility. I think it is a major issue. I want there to be um, push buttons on every door so that students have easy access to all of the buildings. Um, is that three points? 
Um, another thing that I would like to do as well is to provide um, more diverse events on campus. I think that this is kind of something that we're lacking in. I think that we need to kind of represent all of our cultures on campus because we have such a wide campus and we need to represent everyone equally. Diversity Week is a major thing. I want to celebrate all of the cultures that we have. And I think what a great way as well to kind of interlink these cultures, interact students, sanctuary students as well. We need to kind of represent everyone. But at the end of the day, it's our students, our campus. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, same question to you, Chris Dort. What would be two or three key focus areas for you? Perfect. Yes, yeah, so I've already touched on this a little bit in the host that um, we've, I've formed my campaign around three main points, so inclusivity, engagement and sustainability. And I might just work backwards through them now because I went over time in the last one. So um, on sustainability, my biggest thing is um, that I was involved in, in the last few months in a campaign to get UL to declare a climate emergency. Um, I think this is really important because the whole campus community is affected by this, like the future that we're all studying for is threatened by the climate and biodiversity emergencies. Um, sadly, we, the campus was shut down just before we went public with this, so I'd really like to continue that, that work in that campaign. Um, and it involved like clear steps um, that UL would have to commit to to reach carbon neutrality by 2030 and um, improve sustainability in lots of other areas, such as biodiversity and plastic pollution. Um, engagement. Um, my biggest thing in engagement is the um, involvement of students in accommodation and how students can have more of a say. So there are models in other, like the, the system we have at the moment isn't good enough. We, it's too expensive, there isn't enough, and now they're trying to bring in shared rooms and students just weren't consulted enough on this. Um, there are models of a student accommodation in other European countries where the dorms are actually run by the students and they're cost priced so they're owned publicly. Um, so I'd really like to promote and explore avenues of how we could develop this kind of accommodation system in UL. And on, on inclusivity, my, um, my biggest thing again, as Chelsea touched on, um, which I'm glad that she's touching on as well, um, is accessibility for students with disabilities. Um, so students um, with autism on campus, I've been talking to a few and they just told me that it's so overwhelming um, the campus, it's so busy all the time. We need more quiet sensory friendly areas, especially in the library because the disability services section um, isn't even that quiet really. And we need better access for wheelchair users because especially when construction work is taking place, it feels like wheelchair users haven't been considered enough. If you're trying to go from Stable City to the library at the moment, it's really, really difficult if you're in a wheelchair. You have to cross the road or go through the main building. So um, yeah, those are the three main points. Thank you. Perfect. And same question to you, Aoife. Yeah, perfect. So I, I'm going to kind of do similar to Christor because I actually did run very well, much so over time. Um, so working back kind of on my points uh, and one that I didn't really get to touch on was um, obviously with COVID-19 taking place now at the moment, um, there's been a lot of focus on student nurses and the Trojan work that they're doing, um, not just in UL, but around the country. Um, I have a lot of friends that are nurses and um, they're putting them, themselves on the front line every single day. And um, I know with Simon Harris, after making that announcement recently about nurses being paid, it's really a good step in the right direction. But it did get me kind of thinking and from discussions that I was having with friends of mine, with family and um, that are nurses as well. Obviously, a big thing that I want to um, fight and I suppose promote um, the, the fight for on campus is um, unpaid placements. So not just for student nurses, for midwives, physios, teachers, anyone that is doing a fair day's work should receive a fair day's pay. So I know that there's a little bit of um, working around to be done with that, but um, I think that our nurses are doing such a fantastic job and for the uh, services that they're providing, um, especially student nurses, um, some nurses are having to balance two jobs um, in, a, in any given time to, to try to support themselves. Um, so that's one of the things I'm very, very passionate about. Um, working backwards again then, obviously the, the fight for Iron Mark, or the fight against Iron Mark rather, is a very, very um, big passion point of mine. Um, as I mentioned, I am the team lead for Anactus UL. So with Anactus, we work um, for social enterprises and I'm actually involved in one of the social enterprises working with IPAs, so International Protection Applicants. So these refugees, these asylum seekers living in the direct provision centres around Limerick, um, some of them students as well. The, the treatment that they're currently receiving is completely unjustifiable and I really want to be able to say that during my time in UL I was part of the movement to remove our mark from campus because as I said um, a lot of the restaurants that we have on campus are actually um, provided by and supported by our mark and as well the vending machines not many people know that so 
Um, I suppose in my overall manifesto, inclusivity is, is something that I really want to, to focus on. So my kind of solution, I suppose, is um, with this, by removing our mark, you're actually bringing in um, a more diverse range of restaurants. Oh, I'm really bad at this. I just cut you off there, Eva. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're okay. It happens to Terrible everybody. Um, okay, so um, thank you, candidates. Um, so the next question uh, is uh, sorry, excuse me, got lost. Um, yes, uh, what makes you qualified to represent the communities on campus? So we start with Crystal. Yeah, perfect. So, um, great question. Um, I have been quite involved in um, in various like campus activities since I since I joined um, UL in first year. So when I joined UL um, in September, I attended a meeting for the Environmental Society, and um, I was quite new to everything. I was just really interested, and actually, it was just being set up really, so I became president straight away. So I was kind of really thrown into a really highly responsible role. And um, over those three semesters, we this three semesters that I was president, um, and since then they have done a lot. Um, all the vending machines you see around campus at the moment, um, or sorry, not the vending machines, the water refill stations all came in um, during. That was all came in from a campaign that was started when I was president of Inversox. So I'm really interested in sustainability in representing the interests of students on campus in the campus community who um, are concerned about the climate emergency and how it's going to affect this, the future that they're studying for at the moment. Um, I'm still quite involved in a lot of the um, climate movements of Fridays for Future and Extinction Rebellion in Limerick. So um, I really know I have contacts to reach out to in, in all that area. Um, so yeah, and apart from that, I am just consider myself quite a um, kind considerate person. So um, yeah, I really want to, and I'm hardworking and dedicated, so I want to work out to, as I said, make you all more inclusive, engaging and sustainable. That's it. Perfect. Thank you, Christor. And so, question, next, same question to you, Eva. Okay, hopefully I'll stay under time this time. Um, so obviously you, you're hopefully getting this across from the way I talk is I am a massive people person. I love being around people. I love chatting to people, meeting new people. Um, and when I was um, making my manifesto, I suppose people was at the core of that. So um, with, with my manifesto and all the points that I've made, I think I hopefully come across the type of person I am. I'm passionate about what I do. I care for the environment, I care for people, um, I'm hardworking, I'm dedicated, um, I've been team lead for an act as UL this year, like I keep mentioning, um, I've been really lucky to have been able to head that um, absolutely amazing society. Um, so working with students from all different walks of life, and not just students, but other members of the community as well, it's really kind of opened my eyes to not just the, the, the student side of things, but oh, I suppose the whole um, idea of Limerick in general. So. Um, when it comes to the fact as well that I've been class rep, I am a problem solver. I like to meet with people and kind of work out ideas in a way that is beneficial to everyone. So um, obviously with that, I, I would like to think that if someone was to approach me uh, to come into my office and they had a problem, I would sit down, work through um, all the different solutions in the best way possible. And um, yeah, I am just very, very passionate. I... I'm running out of things to say now, which is kind of ironic. Um, um, yeah, I'm used to representing the university. I've done the marketing communications job as well. So I'm used to kind of representing the university on not just um, scales from societies and from class rep, but also kind of being the face, if you want to call it that, of UL to a certain point. So um, also one of the things, and I suppose, um, I don't know if I've kind of gotten it across enough, is I am very, very passionate about UL. Um, I moved down here practically on my own um, when I started in first year and ever since then UL has felt like my home and my community so when this job came up it kind of just clicked with me straight away that this would be something that I, I do feel I would be good for um, because I can kind of resonate with people maybe um, in a way if they're coming down in your own I see the table about to tap yeah <laughs> very passionate okay. about it <laughs> And so Chelsea, same question. So kind of 
likewise what everyone's kind of been saying i'm very i am a very compassionate and empathetic person i am so made of motivated to ensure that all students voices are heard and um, i think you know what makes me good for this role is that i am so motivated to achieve equality for all students by working in student life it's given me an incredible insight into the first hand kind of experiences that, that students have that come into us and it's just it's just crazy and like when the this role was introduced i see the urgency for the development of, of that role which is why i ran for this position so i believe that i would represent this role very well for them reasons. I want to ensure that everyone on campus has a voice and that their voice is heard. I want students to feel as if they can come to me and talk to me and that I'm relatable and like a, a friend because like everything else you need your, you need to have a friend on campus and I want to be everyone's friend. I want them to feel like they can talk to me whenever they need to and tell me the issues on campus because at the end of the day the most important thing is that we represent students. Like other candidates as well know that, that we have to represent these students. I want to say at the end of the day that if I did get elected, that I would 100% fulfill this role and be able to represent every different minority group that is on campus. So I want to be able to proudly say that I put 100% into giving the voice to the overlooked and neglected on campus because there's so many people that are neglected and overlooked on campus. So I think that that is what that is why that I would be elected for this role, hopefully. <laughs> okay, it. fantastic. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you, candidates. Um, so next question is, um, where am I now? Oh yeah, um, so if you, you are elected, what will you prioritize within your first 30 days in office? So, um, we will start with Aoife. You're on mute, Aoife, that's the only thing. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, so, I think within my first 30 days, um, I suppose one of the things, obviously, and it is top of my manifesto, um, is the disability accessibility. So. The first thing that I would go about, and I know um, the previous life officers and fair play to you guys, you've been making strides and making the campus more accessible, especially to wheelchair users. Um, so obviously in the plaza now having that um, available there for students is fantastic. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, one of the things that I would really like to bring in is the disability accessibility audit. So I know UL at the moment have their equality and human rights uh, strategy that was brought in, I think maybe two years ago. So I would be looking to kind of implement this audit in conjunction with the strategy and kind of get going on that straight away. A um, little bit of a kind of a side story. I was on crutches there myself uh, two weeks ago and even in that experience, trying to get around campus, I find it increasingly difficult. And that's kind of what got me thinking, oh God, this is how some people actually have to try get about campus every single day. So priority for me would definitely be getting the implementation of the disability audit and kind of working on that. And one thing that I would love to kind of promote straight away would be the implementation of a wheelchair um, accessibility um, ramp. So I don't know, a lot of people know the steps going down between the library um, down and the, the main building. I'd love to be able to put a wheelchair ramp there, um, obviously in, in guidelines with the I, IWA, um, and kind of get that up and running. And uh, obviously it'll reduce the amount of time it takes for students to, um, Take for students to travel from one side of campus to the other because currently they have to kind of do a very roundabout way of going through the main building down the lift and then through and um, so obviously that would be just something little, a little small thing that would make such a big difference to students lives um, and I'd love to kind of get that ball rolling straight away to get the discussion going about that definitely. Okay. Thank you Eva. under time as well. Um, ah. <laughs> okay so uh, Chelsea same question to you. Sorry. Um, I think that something that I would definitely like to prioritize is trying to get um, legal, free legal aid for our students for who are kind of struggling currently now with accommodation and different things. I know with the whole situation that's going on with COVID-19, students are under increased pressure and with financially and people's parents aren't working and everything else. And we don't want our students to feel not only stressed with the whole situation of COVID-19, but to also kind of have that free legal aid and have that help from us as student officers to try and get their rent and deposit back. 
because I know this is going to be a major, major issue. And especially when we get into office, if we get into office, you know, during that time, it'll be kind of May, June, that these students will be trying to get their money back. And I think that this is a major issue that we need to try and help our students. I know that I've already had people kind of contacted, contacting me directly and asking them, you know, what, it, what it's going to be, what's going to be happening and what are we going to do to support them as student officers. So I think definitely to implement free legal aid and also to kind of, you know, make sure that they, they are getting their money back and that to take some of the stress off them because nationally we all need to kind of support each other throughout this troubling time. We are all under so much pressure with so many different things. Another thing as well that I would like to prioritise as well is that students are such a disadvantage right now from working at home. With the whole COVID-19 situation, I want to make sure that students are not affected by this academically. It is not fair that students, that these results should affect our students' QCA and overall grades. Because for, especially for fourth year students, it doesn't represent the hard work that we've put in for the last four years. We don't have access to the library or books or lectures or tutors. We don't have office hours. It's situations like this. And we all need to kind of, as student officers, support our students now more than ever through this crisis. So that's kind of the things I want to prioritize, definitely the effects that COVID-19 has with accommodation and with the lack of resources for our students and making sure that academically they are not punished for this whole crisis that we're going through. And I think that that's what we need to do is basically support our students in any way that we can. Okay. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> uh, just, just about. Um, uh, just same question to you, Christor. Yeah. Perfect. So um, what I would focus on in the first 30 days would be dialogue. So reaching out, communicating to people as much as possible, because I think any of us going into this role, like while we're all quite experienced candidates and would all bring great things to the table, I think we're all like, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot that we don't know. So what I would want to do first off is to just reach out to all the different groups on campus who form the campus community to see what they need. So if you look at my manifesto, that's a lot of what it's about is dialogue and like reaching out to people so that the students can be more involved in what goes on and in the decisions that are made. So that's kind of what I did as well in, in forming the manifesto. So students told me what their issues were with, um, with, with disabilities, um, disability access, um, accommodation. Um, a lot of commuter students told me that, that they feel kind of left out in a lot of ways and find it quite difficult to to integrate into campus life and things like that. So um, that's what I would be, be doing in the first 30 days is reaching out to students, seeing how they think that the, how reaching out to students with disabilities to see how, what they need, reaching out, reaching out to sanctuary students to see what they need and how they can be helped and how they're learning. And so these can be facilitated a lot better by the university and by student life, reaching out to students to see um, what they need in relation to accommodation. Um, Chelsea has touched on the, the point of the COVID-19 and the refunds, um, but also we need to think long term with accommodation and that means like past the one year term that I would be then in office and I want to see a whole new system of accommodation set up that is by students for students. So I would like to reach out to students and hold forums and see what they need, what, how they hold forums on um on how they think that the campus could contribute more to solving the climate and biodiversity emergencies um i also in the first 30 days would focus on workshops so your student life has been doing great work in bringing in compulsory and consent workshops for first years i'd like to see this done in orientation week and extended to those of different areas such as um disability awareness gender and sexuality because educating our students can make the campus more inclusive and safer space for everyone okay That's thank it. you under time is that um okay so uh, next question is, um, do you think that UL is a diverse and inclusive college? Why or why not? Um, so we'll start with Chelsea with this one. Um, well, to be honest, I think that this is something that definitely needs to be worked on. I mean, I know that we do have UL Diversity Week and in my manifesto actually I touched on kind of providing more diverse events that celebrate the different and unique cultures that we have on campus. So I definitely do think that there is improvement needed, especially with kind of the events from working in student life as well. Some of the events that we do have as well, you know, they're obviously they're more so orientated for profits for raising money for charities. I want to provide more events that kind of 
celebrate these cultures that we have and kind of in, like interact with different cultures on campus and kind of you know get to know different kind of people's situations and stuff and hopefully kind of foster kind of friendships through the, these events so I definitely think that there is so much more room for improvement but I also hope to work with the um, equality and diversity um, rep because um, I think that together if we work together we can definitely help each other because this is a new role and at the end of the day you can't come into the role and say that you know exactly everything that needs to be done you need to ask questions and that's exactly what I'm willing to do I want to figure out how I can represent our students better provide more equality and definitely increase diversity on campus because we do have a lot of diversity on campus however I don't think it's being accurately portrayed right now but I definitely, definitely want to work on this and accurately represent it in the best way that I can. Okay, thank you, Chelsea. Uh, same question to you, Christor. Yes, so um, do I think UL is a diverse campus? Yes, and that we have lots of people from lots of different people of all um, ages, race, religion, disabilities, sexual orientation, gender orientation, all those things. Um, are we a diverse campus in how we accept and like help those people? Yes, but not always. So um, I don't believe that obviously that anyone should be discriminated against um, because of their identity. But I think that in order, it's not enough to just believe that we have to do something about it. So in order to um, prevent any kind of discrimination, I think that UL student life needs to take a stronger, st a stronger stand and there needs to be more support for students who do experience discrimination in UL, in UL student life. So at the moment in Ireland, there's no um, hate crime legislation on a national level. So I believe the EOS student life should take a much stronger approach on this. So my plan for that is a three-step approach that has been introduced in other universities um, in the UK. And so number one, I would organize an awareness raising campaign on what hate crime is and how to recognize it. So some people might be experiencing it, but not know that it is a hate crime, not know that they're being discriminated against in that way. And secondly, provide adequate training to students and staff so that they know they know number one how to identify hate crime and know how to address it. And thirdly, I think that UL Student Life should have a dedicated hate crime reporting system so that students have somewhere a safe space where they can go to um, address those issues uh, when they need to. And I'd also like to just mention the workshops again. So I think that more compulsory workshops for first years so that they're educated on disability acceptance, um, accepting people of different races, different gender and sexual orientation. Um, educating our students and facilitating them to be more accepting and tolerant is helpful in making UL a more inclusive and a safer space for everyone. Fantastic. Thank you, Chris Dorr. Um, same question to you, Aoife. Yeah, perfect. So like the others, I think that UL, definitely, we are a very diverse um, campus. I do think that there is, as with a lot of things, there's room for improvement. Now, to, to acknowledge, I suppose, the, the strides that UL, UL has taken so far. Uh, one of my, my favourite things I suppose to come about last year was the introduction of the rainbow housing in UL. Um, obviously, that is an absolutely fantastic initiative and it's something that I'm very, very supportive of. Supportive of. Um, so that's something actually that I, I've started looking into and kind of discussing with a few people on how we can further support, say, members of the LGBT um, plus the society, um, society community and kind of see how we can better support them and with the implementation of rainbow housing um, what what more can be done to kind of I suppose further promote inclusion and diversity um, another thing as well that I would have a good bit of experience with myself is the uh, sanctuary program and then in fact in kind of in the smaller terms as well the sanctuary bursary so obviously UL is a registered or recognized uh, university of sanctuary so um, it's one of the best things I think that UL has. It gives an absolutely amazing opportunity for students um, coming from uh, direct provision um, to give them basically an opportunity to learn, to interact with students just like themselves, just coming from a slightly different environment. And that was something that I, when I joined Enactus, that I was really, really passionate about getting on board with. So like what I said earlier, um, working with Restart has been absolutely phenomenal for that. Um, the amount of sanctuary students that have uh, come on board with us and worked on the stall with us has been amazing. So I think, yeah, there's definitely things that UL is doing right, but I think that there is definite scope for improvement. Um, like what the others were saying as well, diversity and, the diversity and um, inclusion officers, I'd love to get in contact with them, have a chat with them, see what I can do, because I think Chelsea said as well, it is a new role. So um, it's something that I would love to look into more and I suppose really, really, um, 
push ourselves to be the best university we can be, as diverse as we can be. We always promote as well the fact that we are um, fantastic with our international program, um, bringing students from so many different parts of the world. I think there's definitely scope to bring their cultural experiences into the life more. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Aoife, I have to cut you off. Again. No problem. Um, <laughs> right, so we have time for one more question. Um, so, finally, um, we'll end on a nice one. So, how do you plan on promoting equality on campus? Um, we'll start with you, Christor. Perfect. Um, so I suppose it touches a lot on what I said for the last one. So um, my hate, my plan of hate crime will improve equality on campus because it means that no one can it will help people who are getting discriminated against um, because of let's say gender, sexual, sexual orientation, um, race, religion, whatever. Um, I also believe that um, when we talk about equality, we, we talk a lot about. About, uh, we talk a lot about racism, we talk a lot about um, homophobia, we talk about all these things which is really really good sexism. Um, we're not talking a lot about um, classism so I really like to um, extend the criteria that equality covers to also like cover um, not discriminate against people because of their social background and promoting um, more accessibility in UL to people so to people to come to UL from whatever social background um, that may be. So we have the the, um, the welfare fund at the moment in, in student life, which is really good for students experiencing financial difficulties, but there needs to be like more of these um, kind of measures as well. And as the two girls said, talking to the um, equality officers would be really, um, a really good way to start because as we've all been acknowledging, it's a brand new role and we don't all know, we don't all have the answers. We need to find out and see more about what needs to be done. Um, what else? I suppose um, I also feel that um, not everyone who comes to UL has the same experience. So um, I've had a great time in UL. I've always felt really part of the campus experience, had an amazing time. But some people come and they really struggle. And um, so I'd like to reach out to more, more groups on campus who feel they're struggling. So um, as I said, commuter students, but also just students who are finding it to maybe for no particular reason, they're just a little bit shy, they're finding it harder to make friends, things like that. So I'd like to reach out to, to students and nice more events in, we'll say Freshers' Week, but also after Freshers' Week, like weeks two and three, when things kind of calm down and students are only starting to get settled and find friends, so that um, people can find more friends, maybe alcohol-free events, where people can come just, if you're finding it hard to come and have a cup of tea, for seven weeks does great, great work in that kind of thing as well. So to promote more of that, um, in order to improve the quality. And then again, the workshops I want to, um, one of the workshops that I want to introduce is an equality and diversity workshop. So um, there are ones out, there's a model out there already. I think it's called Yellow Flag, I need to double check that. Okay. Sorry, I'll have to cut you off. Sorry, Ned. Uh, thank you, Chris Dorr. Um, so Chelsea, same question to you. How do you plan to promote equality on campus? Um, I think that by being this, by being elected as this role, it is essentially kind of speaking up for people and ensuring that everyone kind of feels represented. And that's kind of what I aim to do to promote equality. And one of the main things to do is to kind of figure out how students are feeling like they are being limited and how, what I can do to better help these students. So mainly what I want to do is I want to increase kind of focus groups where students can kind of tell me how, what I can do to support them. Because, you know, we've all touched on the fact that this is such a new role. We can't act like we know exactly everything that we need to do. So I think that that is the best thing to do to kind of to ask the students what we can do to better support them. So to ensure that every student gets the same equal chance. As um, we were saying before, not everyone has the same experience in college. And like that's not fair. Students should kind of have better resources. I mean, we have funding in Student Life with Jenny. We have different things. We have access. We have... We want to work with um, the Disability Services Contact Point to ensure that disability students have better resources to be supported. We want to ensure LGBT are being like, are completely represented. There's so many different groups, environmental groups as well, mature students. We want to ensure that equality is widely represented on campus. It is definitely such, such an issue that students, I don't want any student to feel like they are limited in any way. And I want just exactly as I was saying, 
every student to have the exact same experience as much as possible because UL is such an amazing university and I've honestly enjoyed my time here so much. So I want every individual, every student to feel the same way and for students as well. It's our job as well to treat people equally as well and we have to do that. We have to express equality to each other. We have to treat everyone equally because everyone on campus is one of our friends. They're a student of ours and we just want to promote that completely. Okay, thank you, Chelsea. Now, Aoife, same question yeah. to you. How do okay. you plan to promote equality on campus? Okay, so with obviously the COVID-19 um, situation that's going on at the moment, um, I think we can all say um, that we've learned that community is very important and that people are important. And I think a lot of people are finding being away from their loved ones and their friends is, is becoming very, very difficult. So by um, us coming together as a community, so if I was to get this role, I would be joining up, linking up with the president, academic and welfare officers, sit down and have a talk see where we can go from here on how we can best promote equality across campus so um, like Chelsea said there's so many fantastic groups and initiatives across UL already um, we have our rainbow housing we have our sanctuary students we have so so many different things we have Chris Dora and the fantastic work that the environmental society are doing um, there's so many opportunities for UL to further promote equality on campus and um, I feel like with that, um, we have an obligation, and I think Chelsea mentioned it as well, we have an, um, an opportunity and I suppose, um, um, we have the chance, I suppose, to, to reach out and access all of our students um, through the roles that we're in. We're being given a fantastic opportunity here to reach out to students, to talk to them, and find out what it, exactly it is that we can do to, to make campus as best possible. Um, we, are an extremely diverse university. And given that, we should be really looking to all of these different groups, looking for their opinions, looking for feedback constantly. And with that in return, we're transparent with them, with the students on what it is that we're doing to fight for them and fight for equality on campus. Whether that is accommodation, whether that is LGBT plus supports, whether that is disability accessibility, all of these opportunities that we're being given to help students. And from this then, it's not just going to be the experience that they remember in college. It's something that they'll hopefully take through them the rest of their lives. I've been so lucky to have four fantastic years in UL and the, the officers prior to me have done absolutely amazing work to make my university experience amazing. I'd love to same with them. Okay, thank you, Aoife. Right, so folks, so we've come to the end of the grueling questions. So I'm going to give everybody, each candidate, one minute for any closing remarks. And I suppose it's an opportunity to tell people why to vote for you. Um, so if you want to take it away there, who's first on the screen? Christor, if you want to start first for closing remarks. Perfect. So yeah, once again, just thanks to Chelsea and Aoife for a great hostings and to James and Colin for hosting it. Um, it's been really good to chat up all the different ideas that everyone has and I think the role is in safe hands no matter who gets it. Um, so yeah, just again, if any, um, my campaign is all about um, inclusivity, engagement and sustainability. Um, I've mentioned my key points already. Please um, follow the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram to see more details and help with the manifesto. Um, I believe I can do this role. I have experience in implementing positive change on campus and in reaching out to people and in um, just like if people can come to me and with ideas, that's what I love. Um, so yeah, um, for inclusivity, engagement and sustainability, please check out the manifesto and the socials and vote for me on Thursday. Thank you very much. Thank you. And to you, Aoife, closing remarks. Yeah, so again, just to kind of, um, as Christopher said, thank you so much to Christopher and to Chelsea for a fantastic hostings. It's so great to hear um, so many like-minded students kind of coming together to, to, I suppose, make the university as, as best as it can be. So just on my own uh, stances, I'd like to just reiterate, if um, you were to vote for me, I would bring in positivity. I would bring in my own personal experiences with, um, equality and with diversity. I would love to represent the students of UL. I know that I have had leadership positions in the past that would allow me to bring my own experiences in and I'm more than happy to take on board feedback, listen to students. That's one of my, my main passions. I'm such a people person. 
Um, I'm used to standing up and fighting for what's right. Um, and I'd love nothing more to give back to the university that's already given me so much. So if you were to vote for me on April 2nd, I would love nothing more. Um, and also to support myself and my team LEAP as well, because they are absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. Thank you, Eva And Chelsea, finally. Yeah, as, um, as everyone has been saying, Christora and um, Aoife as well, it's been so nice to chat with you and I think definitely we're all kind of on the same page. We want, we want to implement change and that's, that's the main thing at the end of the day. I mean, that's why, that's why we're running for this position because we are so passionate about it. So I just want to say, um, you know, it's been, this whole experience has been so, so incredible as well. I would be honoured to be your first Vice President for Communities, as I've kind of already said. I am an extremely motivated person and I think that, you know, one of the reasons why I was so nervous about it is because I am so, I just want change so much and I really, really am passionate about this role. I seen the introduction of it in student life from working there and I instantly knew the urgency for this role. I thought this role has got to get passed because our students are not being represented as they should be. And I want to represent our students and I think that I can represent our students in the best way. I want people to come to me with suggestions. I want people to be I need students to help me with this role. I mean, that's such an important thing about representing students. You need students' voices to do that. And I really hope that through my points, I was clear enough and that people could understand kind of where I was coming from. If not, check out my manifesto as well. If you have any questions, let me know on the Instagram page as well. I'm running with Team Jack and we've been working so, so hard to kind of get our names out there. And at the end of the day, to show to students that we care about them and they come first no matter what any situations that come at us, we want to represent students and we want students to know that through COVID-19 as well, we will do anything we can to support them through this pressing time. So I suppose that's kind of what I want to say, that I would be honoured to be your first Vice President for Communities. And I also want to wish the other candidates best of luck as well in whatever way this goes. I know the role is in safe hands. Okay, thank you folks. Um, and this draws hostings for Vice President for Communities to an end. Um, and thank the candidates and thank you to Mr. James Deegan and thank you to everybody that submitted questions online. And thank you to the Zoom app as well. Okay.